Hi guys, it's Ben here, and these are my Premier League predictions for 2017-18. So the Premier League season is finally here. It is almost upon us. It kicks off on Friday with Arsenal versus Leicester City. I am so excited. Let's get straight into the predictions. In the relegation zone this year, I'm going for Huddersfield firstly. I just don't think their squad is gonna be able to cope in this league and the signings they've made just don't scream out to me as safe. Premier League signings. I like Tom Ince, I'm intrigued by Aaron Moy, but I'm just not sure they're going to have anywhere near enough to survive. I think they're going to be bottom of the league. Brighton, who have also come up, I think they're going to go straight back down. I like Debbie Proper from PSV Eindhoven. I've always looked at him as a player that I think might do well in the Premier League. But other than that, I'm just not convinced about their squad. Same issues as Huddersfield. I just think the strength and depth isn't going to be there. My other pick is Watford. Now, I think they're going to be pushing a lot closer. I think they might go down with around 38 or 39 points. I like the signing of Will Hughes. I think Andre Gray might do okay. Marco Silva was earning great reviews at Hull last season, but he did end up getting relegated, so he can't be that great. They're my pick to go down with two of the promoted clubs. In 17th, I've got Newcastle United. Now, they haven't made any brilliant signings just yet. They've signed Harry Mankio, formerly of Liverpool, of course. They've got a few others in Atsu permanently. Marino from Dortmund, Jacob Murphy. I'm, I think they'll just about have enough. I'm not convinced by their signings so far, but I think there might be one or two later on in the window. It's obviously hard to predict, you know, three weeks away from the end of the deadline, what's going to happen. But I think Newcastle will just about get over the line this season. In 16th, I'm going to go for Swansea. I think Paul Clement did a great job last year. Sigurdsson probably will leave. But they've still got Lorente there, they'll probably replace Sigurdsson, they'll get a lot of money for him. I think they'll be just about okay, they've some great football towards the back end of the last campaign. 15th, I'm going for Crystal Palace. Frank de Boer hasn't made too many signings yet, he's brought in Loftus-Cheek from Chelsea. He's got Riedervald from Ajax, he hasn't really put a stamp on things just yet. It might take him a year to really settle in. I think he will be a success at Palace in the long run, but I think they'll have to settle for a finish just above the relegation zone this year in 15th. In 14th, I'm going for Burnley, I think Jack Cork's a really tidy signing for them. Surprising that Swansea would let him go, and Jonathan Walters is a brilliant signing. It really, really is. I think he's going to score eight to ten goals for them. They'll have enough to stay up quite comfortably. In 13th, I've got Bournemouth. I don't think they're going to finish quite as high as they did last season, but they have signed Jermaine Defoe, Nathan Ake. They've made some brilliant signings. Begovic. So I'm very confident they will stay in the Premier League, but I think a lot of teams will just get a bit better and they'll just sort of stay where they are. They also may well lose the goals of Josh King, who could be on his way to Spurs. In 12th, I'm picking West Brom. Joe Rodriguez might turn out to be good for them, but I've got very little to say about them. They'll score from set pieces. They'll win a lot of home games. They'll probably finish around mid-table. 11th, Stoke. Again, just another mid-table side. Kurt Zuma's a good signing on loan for them. Darren Fletcher would do okay. It'll be a good head to have in the dressing room as the cliche goes, but I can't see anything other than the mid-table finish for them again. West Ham have been busy the last few weeks. They signed Javier Hernandez, who I think will do well for them. Arnautovic will be decent too. He's certainly not going on Snodgrass. I'm, I've never been convinced on Joe Hart for the last three years. Pablo Zabaleta's getting on a bit. I think they'll have an okay season. I don't think they'll have such a disastrous start as they did last time, but I'll Struggle to see them finishing anywhere other than mid-table. In ninth, I'm going for Southampton. They always seem to be just fine, no matter who they lose. Hopefully they lose Virgil van Dijk, <laughs> but I'm sure they'll be fine regardless. They always play nice football. They're still gonna have some tidy players in there. Ninth place for them. In eighth, I'm going for the champions of 15, 16 Leicester City. I like the signing of Ian Acho. Harry Maguire could be a bit of shrewd business. They just need to keep hold of Riyad Mahrez, which they may well struggle to do. Jamie Vardy is going to be there, though. There's still plenty of quality in there. Drinkwater has been linked with a move away, but they're going to recruit plenty of money if they do sell these star names. So Leicester City to do pretty well this year, eighth place. In seventh, I'm going for Everton. I keep hearing about they're going to finish above Liverpool. They're going to break into the top four. I'm sorry. I just don't think they've strengthened anywhere near as much as some people think they do. They've lost their best player by a mile, Romelu Lukaku. They may well still lose Barkley. Okay, they signed Rui. Rooney, Klassen, Pickford, Keane, who am I missing, Sandro. Some great players, of course, but not players that have got me particularly worried about them. I still think they're going to be about seventh. In sixth, I'm going for Spurs. Now, they have proved me wrong the last couple of years. I didn't think they'd be improve again last season, but they did. Haven't signed anybody yet. Uh, of course, they will end up signing three or four players. It's Spurs, of course they will, but it seems to be a bit of unrest. Kyle Walker's gone. Seems like Danny Rose isn't quite happy. I'm just not convinced. I don't know. I how can I possibly pick them to finish any higher than sixth with the signings other teams have made? 
how strong everyone else looks. The Wembley factor, of course, which is, again, a cliche, but you can't ignore it. Everyone's gonna be going to Wembley thinking it's their cup final. I can't help but think they're gonna just struggle a bit and fall down to sixth. In fifth, I'm going for Chelsea. I really shouldn't write them off. I was writing them off at the start of last season a little bit when they dropped a few points and look what happened. I'm just not sure Morata's that good. I'm really not. 60 million pounds, he's not better than Diego Costa. If they lose Costa, that's such a huge loss. He really fired them to the title, especially in the first half of last season. He was pivotal for them. Bakayoko will come good. Rudiger's a solid addition. They may still get Van Dijk, it's between us and them, but I just don't think they've improved enough, Chelsea. I think they may well downgrade a bit. Seems to be, it never seems to go right for them when they win the league. Obviously it did back in the Mourinho days in 2005 and so on, but the last time they won it in 2015, things went wrong, and this time there already seems to be whispers of something not quite right over there, so I'm gonna back them to finish fifth. In fourth, I'm going for Arsenal now. They have dropped out of the Champions League, but the Lacazette signing, it's come a few years too late for them. I think if they'd have bought him in maybe three or four years ago, they may well have gone on to win the league in that time, but they've brought him in now. They've brought in Kolesinac. They've strengthened pretty well, and we'd be fools to think they were finished. They've been linked with the likes of Mares, Lamar, a couple others. Looks like Sanchez is pretty 50-50. I thought he was a shoe in to leave, but he may well stay. Ozil looks like he's gonna stay. Oxlade Chamberlain, obviously not as important as those two, but I'd be surprised if he left now. Renga's obviously staying around, there's more certainty there, so there's going to be less of that hanging over his head now. I say that, he may well find himself in the same position in February, but I just think Arsenal are going to sort of consolidate themselves, get back into top four. They'll have no Champions League football to worry about. Yes, they'll have the Europa League, but I'm sure they can just give the kids a run out in those games. They're going to get back into top four, I think, and finish fourth. In third, I'm going for my team, Liverpool, now. I really thought I was going to be backing him to finish higher than this, and I think if we had managed to get Naby Keita and Van Dijk in by now, then I'd be more sure of that. Lallana's injury doesn't help, Coutinho's speculation doesn't help, but we haven't got those big signings in. We've got Salah, which I'm delighted about, and he's going to be a big difference for us. He really, really is. Solanke might get some games. Robertson's a solid addition. Some of the youngsters are coming through. Woodburn, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Ryan Kent might even do okay. He might get some games. I do think we will sign someone big, whether it be Van Dijk or not, to sort that defence out. And on the basis of that, I can't. we're not going to lose any of our best players unless something does happen with Coutinho, which I'm starting to lean towards not happening. Him going to Barcelona, I think we may just improve on last season get around 80 points and finish third. So that leaves the Manchester clubs in the top two and I'm gonna pick United to finish second. Lukaku, say what you want about him being a flat track bully or anything, his first touch not being great, we've all seen the stuff on Twitter, but he is gonna score them at least 20 goals. They may well bring in Zlatan too, who could be fit for the second half of the season. Matic is a shrewd signing. I'm not sure it's a brilliant one. I think Fabinho would've been better for them because you really can get at Matic, but it's solid. They got Lindelof in to help out in the defense. Mourinho's second season is always a bit better than the first one, so I think they're going to improve, I think they're going to do well, and I think they're going to just be pipped to the title by Manchester City, who have gone out and done their business early, they've sorted their fullbacks out, they've gotten Bernardo Silva, they're going to get a full season out of Jesus, a new goalkeeper, Pep's second season, similar sort of stuff to Klopp and Mourinho I guess, but Pep Guardiola's squad at his disposal is just by far the strongest in the league, the strike force is ridiculous, if they can keep Aguero fit, if they can keep Torre fit and interested, I just can't look past Manchester City to be Premier League champions this season. Leave a comment with your predictions for this season. I'm so excited for this one to get underway. Do let me know your thoughts. Will Liverpool win the league? Will we miss out on top four? Are the lack of signings so far going to cost us? And if you're an opposition fan, are your team going to stay up mid-table, win the league, whatever? Let me know what's going on. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Drop a like, share the video for me, and follow my other socials too. It's Ben Say on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook and I'll see you next time.